testified to, right? And he was sending them out. Anybody remember this line? He was sending them out as lambs among wolves. Yeah, as lambs among wolves. That's, that's exactly what he said. I want us to remember that. Remember that passage. Remember that God sends us out. And sometimes we go into places that don't look like God ought to be sent. That's what it means as lambs among wolves. How many of y'all think lambs like to be in, in the neighborhood of wolves? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. That's not some place that's comfortable for them that they want to go. But do we also understand that when God was sending the lambs, he was not sending them to be eaten. Amen. Amen? Amen. He was not sending them to be destroyed. And even though he was sending them as lambs, they were going to be protected. They were going to have victory. They were going to do some extraordinary things that only God can do with them. And they needed to be obedient when they went. Amen. They needed to understand that God was around them and protecting them when they went. They need to understand that God had them on a mission where they went. Amen? Alright, so remember that text as I read this other text, which a lot of the Bible study students will recognize will be familiar with. Okay? So it's in 2 Kings chapter 5. Some of you probably already know what it is. 2 Kings chapter 5. Let me know when you're there because I want you to see it. 2 Kings chapter 5. First one. Start in your verse one. I'm going to wait for this one. I'm going to be real, real patient. Make sure you get there. If your neighbor needs a little help getting there, help them out. If you don't know where it is, do what really, really smart people do and look at the table of contents. Okay. If you have one of these. If you can't find it, you got an electronic device, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm listening. Did I hear the pages turn? Okay. Everybody there? Good. Alright. So, uh, the first few verses, pay attention to what they're saying. Now, Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. Because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had lepers. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. And she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his lepers. So I want you to understand what's going on. So Naaman's a captain of an army that is not friendly to God's people. We get that? Aram is not on God's people's side, but he is on God's side. Did y'all catch that? He's not on God's people's side, but he's on God's side. Y'all think it's lying, right? So let's go back and see what it says. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him, who? The Lord. Had given victory to Aaron. Not some other God, not somebody else. He was on God's side, but he was not a friend to God's people. I mean, people understand that even though somebody else may be on God's side, if they're not a friend of us, as believers, we still don't like them. Yeah. Right? I want that to sink in a little bit. <laughs> Because when people are opposing us, it takes us a while to see that maybe they are God's messengers to us to push us back on the right page. Takes us a while to see that because most of us believe that we're all
that really in that time in that society, uh, if you followed the rules, meant that he was disconnected from everybody else. If you had leprosy, you weren't supposed to be around anybody else. That was contagious, get contracted, typically meant that you were unclean, had some curse against you, all that other kind of stuff, right? That was one of his problems. His bigger problem was that even though God was using him, he was a friend of God, he didn't know God. So you ask me, well, how can he be God's friend if he don't know God? Pay attention to what happens in the passage. So whenever we're in that kind of place and we have that kind of opposition, if somebody that is opposing us happens to get victory over us, happens to get that way with us, what we're going to be doing, what's going to happen to us, brother, is we're going to be deepened in our opposition against them, and more convicted that the devil is on somebody else's side, unless, of course, we've had an encounter with God. And we're open to seeing God everywhere, everything that God does with us. So there was this young maid, y'all see it in the text? This young girl, who was an Israelite, who was God's child, who was captured in battle, in war, and brought back from where she lived, everything she was comfortable with, everything that she knew, Since they had been opposed to Israel, 
And so he started doing what all of us would like to do. He started trying to take control of the situation. He got all of the money that he could, all the things that he could buy his way out of the sickness that he could. Now that's probably the dumbest thing in the world that he could have possibly done. You think he had tried to spend his money before to get healed? Right? I mean, if you got money and you know what some people who claim they can heal you, you don't spend your money to get healed, right? But he took all of that so that he could pay the profit for his healing. So he went up, and he took his journey, he took all of his people, he had his entourage with him, and he walked up into the, the king of Israel, not the prophet's house, but in the king's house, and said, okay, where am I healing at? He went to the wrong place, brothers and sisters. It ain't the king. It's not the president. It's not the leader of your company. It's God that we need to approach. It's God that we need to come to. We need to go to the right place. Even the main didn't say go to the king. What's she telling me to go to? To the prophet, go to God. Sometimes we need to listen when people are trying to direct us to where we need to go. We didn't manufacture it in our own mind because of the way we think things work, what we need to do. We have listened to what the Lord is trying to tell us and think we're going to get a whole blessing when we have listened. Come on. Come on. Tell me, really. I mean, really, when you think about what you need to do to make things work right and perfectly, what's your percentage? <laughs> we forget that. Somehow we tell ourselves that we know best when we've been trying for years to get to the right place and we haven't gotten there yet. And so when God shows up, we remix it. You know, we not our, not every remix is a good remix. <laughs> that, that's some mixes we need to leave alone. Leave them the way that they are because that's where the blessing is. That's how they come. Anyway, he ran on up. He went to the king. But then, you know, sometimes God looks beyond our sex. He understands that we're going to mess up. So he got somebody to listen to redirect us when we mess up. Sometimes God wants us just that much. That even though we're half listening, even though we're not paying attention, even though we're doing our own thing, God interrupts us in our path to redirect us to where he wants us to be. So, Elisha was listening, the prophet was listening because he knew, he knew that we, we like we be. We're not going to do what God directs us to do. So God needs to step back in to redirect us and put us back on the right path. So he got to Elisha because Elisha heard that he had arrived in town. Y'all see that in the passage, right? I didn't read all of it. He arrived there got to the place, and then Elisha sent word. You know how insulted he was that Elisha sent word? You know, some of us think, well, the pastor should have came and prayed for him. Y'all don't say that. <laughs> 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 he shouldn't have sent Deacon Bradley down there and prayed for him. The pastor should have came himself. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm right on, right, Pastor. <laughs> He should have sent John Cook by his house. He should have came himself. Right? Why he sending his wife over here? He sent her for what he, for what he needed to do. Go watch in Jordan seven times and you will be here. Some of us are way too caught up and doing things our own way and being important and having somebody recognize us and having somebody call our name, putting us up on a pedestal. We're too caught up in that for God to really deliver us from the stuff that we call it. I was talking to somebody the other day. Gave them something directly out of the Word of God. I didn't even remix it. I was directly out of the Word of God. And, and, and 10 seconds after I had said what God's word said, they started right back doing their own thing. <laughs> we want too much to be important, to be our own instrument for healing. That's why he brought all the money, so he can pay for it. If I can pay for it, I got it. I earned it. He was too caught up in, the, in what he knew about how to redirect, how to clean things up. He was too caught up in that to just listen to what God was trying to tell him and how God was trying to deliver him. And so he said what most of us say. I thought, how many of us said it? 
God every day ever said this, but I thought. <laughs> I thought that he would have come out, did some kind of crazy dance that I didn't know anything about, wave his hands all over the place, shout, call on his gun, I thought that's how I was going to be here. Some of us are wanting too much to hear directly God's audible voice. Some of us are wanting too much for the clouds to darken and all.
to speak up for God, otherwise Naaman would have been lost from his healing and lost from God. Because all of this was a means to really get Naaman's attention to truly show him who God was. And God needed people who trusted him in spite of their circumstances, in spite of the danger that they were in, to stand up for him in that situation and speak what God wanted them to speak. Because literally in the natural world, anybody could have been killed at any moment. All of them. But they believe what God said in Luke. That we are as lambs among wolves, but since God is sending me, I know I'm going to be alright. Yes, God needs us the same way in his house, in every other place, to speak up for him when he calls us to speak. Because people's lives are at stake. Their deliverance is at stake. When he listened, when he went and watched in the Jordan, what he thought was nastier than anything could possibly clean, he was cleansed. And when he tried to pay for his healing, God told him the truth. He told every one of us the truth. You cannot buy what God wants to do for you. Amen. You don't have enough money Mercy. to pay for the healing that yes. God wants yes. to do. Yes. You don't have enough means to connect yourself to the holiness and the greatness that God is to give him blood. That's the only thing you can do. When he understood that he couldn't pay for it, at that moment is when he bowed on his knees and he recognized God for God. As long as we think we can buy stuff, we can control it, it's ours to, to maneuver with. We are out of sync with where we need to be with God. When we're in sync, we recognize that we need to stop relaxing God, thank him for who he is, stop trying to pay for what he's he has blessed us. Amen. Can we do that? So y'all doing something up here real quick. <laughs> that's all right. That's connected probably to that other stuff that I was having. a whole bunch of distractions. <laughs> distractions have been happening all over the place. Y'all think I'm kidding, right? I'm not. I'm serious. That's been distractions happening all over the place. It started a few weeks ago. And some of them were natural like them, and other ones were some other stuff. <laughs> How do we listen in the middle of the distress? Because that's exactly what's going on with the people that we love, who are facing some serious situations right now. It's exactly what's been going on in some other places when we've been trying to get on the right place. A lot of distractions come in and interrupt, and it takes us recognizing that God has power over the distraction. We can hear all we got to do is focus right. on who God is and what he's saying. Yes. He stopped. He turned around. He got healed. He recognized that he could not pay for it. And so what he did is in that moment, he turned to the prophet and said, I now know that God is the only God. Him only will I worship. I got some circumstances that I'm a little bit afraid of, so I'm going to fake some things in some certain places, but I'm going to worship God and God alone. Did y'all catch that? Because if you read the whole story, you recognize he said, I'm going to take some dirt back with me, and I'm going to take the dirt to remind me of the presence and power of God, but because of where I am and what my position is, my boss expects me to serve this other God, and so I don't get killed. I'm going to act like I'm serving. Amen. Amen. But I need you to know, and I, I, I need to know if it's all right with you, yes, sir. that if I fake this, but my heart is to God and God alone, it's Him that I believe in and Him that I worship. Amen. Amen. Where's our heart, brothers and sisters? Yes. Here's another part that I want to connect to beyond what the Bible says. I want to connect to some things that have been going on uh, in our midst. Last week, Andretta asked me to pray for this young man, Michael Sutton. And he died this past week. Michael's nine years old. Andretta asked me to come and pray uh, with her family. And not all of them could make it on, but her mother could be there. And in the midst of that, you know what I expect, right? 
mother is going to be all torn up. Uh, her heart is going to be severely broken. It was a letter I've also understood to ask some questions about people need to talk to. So they tell me about my big smile came on her face. She talked about how delightful he was. She talked about how much joy that God brought to his heart and to their lives through him and how he played music by ear from the time that he was a very young age and how he played chess and all of this wonderful, glorious things. No, I'm waiting for the moment that she's going to break out. <laughs> I'm waiting, okay, is this real? That's what I'm asking. Am I really seeing what I'm seeing? She talked about, yes, I, I, I'm pained by the fact that my son died. But I know God is trying to get my attention. I also know that he's in a better place. And I'm not saying I'm not going to hurt anymore beyond this. But I know that God is trying to bring me back to where I've left for far too long. Come on. And she wasn't saying that God killed her son to get her attention. She was saying that God knows how to take everything in our life and work it for his good. She stayed there through the whole conversation, brothers and sisters. She did not move. She did not budge when we prayed. And there was a whole bunch of other stuff that God, you know, kind of weaved through all of that other kind of stuff. I was reading, looking for the scripture that I needed to read, right? So I stopped the one that I don't reach now that anyway. I stopped it now that anyway. I stopped it another. When I started reading, she started smiling. She said, I don't remember this verse and what it says, but that's exactly the scripture that the person used when I was saved. I'm not that good, brothers and sisters. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't work like this, but God. God. Andretta was an instrument good enough, wise enough, obedient enough to see that she was in the place she needed. She didn't know the young lady first. To connect with her, let the woman stay in her house so that she could get reconnected to God.
one woman, this young woman, should have been traumatized, yeah. destroyed by the death of her child. Yeah. But somehow, God gave her, and this is one of the things I told you, God gave her 